So good evening. I brought Giorgio with me because I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> so, um, are you ready to receive a gift? Yes. Great. A gift which is actually right in front of you. But sadly enough, I must say, this gift is oftentimes overlooked or even ignored. So Giorgio and I will explain to you on how to unravel this gift and how to be more successful when you work with people who are culturally different. Let me guide back a bit into my life. At one point, I was European head of corporate communication. And I was in charge from one day to the other, actually, for 12 different countries. Well, I saw nothing to worry. You know, I'm an open person. I have international experiences. I traveled the world, so what could possibly happen? And I can tell you a lot. <laughs> so my Spanish colleagues were very attentive and charming, a, simil a bit similar to Giorgio. But if they needed to deliver something on time, it was getting a bit challenging. My Dutch friend, I loved to work with her because she was very precise and to the point and very efficient. But sometimes her very directness was off-putting everybody else. And Monsieur Blanchet at Paris, he was a very experienced man and I learned a lot of him. However, he always talked directly to my CEO and never to me. My CEO didn't like it at all. But anyway, at that point in my life, I did underestimate the influence of cultural differences on our collaboration. So one day I had to go to Milano for a business meeting. I woke up early, I went to the airport, I rushed through the airport, side remark, I'm not an early person. I took, uh, I boarded the plane, probably as the last person. I arrived in Milano, I took a taxi, in the taxi, as a good Swiss, reviewing my paper, being very clear what I wanted to achieve, arriving at the subsidiary, jumping out of the taxi, rushing up the stairs, and there he was, Giorgio. Giorgio, strolled leisurely towards me, smiling at me, welcoming me. Ciao, Giorgio. But inside, <laughs> so Giorgio led me to an espresso bar nearby. And believe me, I thought it took years to go there. Then we were there. He ordered two espressi and started to ask questions such as, <laughs> I, of course, was answering them politely because I'm a nice person. But inside me, I was getting more and more nervous. My foot started to bob and I couldn't enjoy the espresso, not at all, although I love espresso. So after a while, because I was thinking, after a while, finally, Giorgio stood up. No, it's not true. He first looked at me with big eyes. Remember Giorgio? And at that time, I was already a bit angry because, hey, I couldn't understand what I'm doing in this espresso bar. <laughs> so finally, Georgia stood up and we went back to the office. We had 90 minutes left, 90 minutes of 120, okay? I was sweating. So this was my Georgia moment, and I'm sure you had some Georgia moments too in your working life, so if so, could you raise your hand? Yes, thank you. <laughs> I would love to have a discussion, but I need to go on. Um, it's nothing given 
that people from different culture are actually successful in collaboration, like Giorgio and me. I mean, yes, we worked on our project, but we weren't very efficient. Because at that time, I was caught up in my mind what I needed to achieve, I was stressed, and I literally heard the clock ticking. So why is it not normal that we actually can successfully collaborate with people from different cultures? Because in our own cultural environment, we know how things run. It's absolutely clear. We f everything feels right. So we know how to conduct a meeting, we know how to say hello, we know how to whatever to we know what is polite and what, in, what is impolite, and so on and so forth. In the very moment where we meet a foreigner, cultures collide. And we are forced out of our comfort zone, and additionally, our view of world is challenged. So I would like, you to, I would like to ask you, please pause for a moment, look closely, you don't need to share it, it's all confidential. Where in your life have you, were you confronted with foreigners? And how did you react to it? Thank you for taking this moment. Being touched by foreigners can be unpleasant. And that's something we need to admit, because I hear a lot, oh, no problem at all, easy peasy, and so on. It's not. Let's admit it. Sometimes it can be unpleasant. And we react. You just explored your emotions a bit. We react by being angry, like me with Giorgio in the espresso bar, helpless, confused, or even frustrated. Interestingly enough, these emotions are not addressed, especially not in the working life. Also, they're absolutely normal and they're part of an intercultural interaction. So, nothing to worry. Everybody is normal when having an emotional reaction. And in this very moment, when we are touched by foreigners, there lies an opportunity. And in this very moment, we have a chance. We can either resist foreigners, or we can get, take the gift of foreignness. And I would like to add again, taking the gift of foreignness makes you much more successful. So let's assume we assist foreigners. What happens? We literally stay in our own comfort zone. We see foreignness as a problem. So I have a lot of people calling me and say, hey, Mrs. Sülinger, you're an intercultural expert. We have a problem with the Americans, the Chinese, or even the people from Zurich. <laughs> so, okay, we are faced with foreigners. <laughs> now I'm lost. <laughs> no, no jokes anymore. <laughs> if we resist foreigners, yes, that's what I said. If we resist foreigners, we see it as a problem, we fight it, and this actually uses a lot of energy. Energy we can use for much more productively. And consequently, communication and cooperation is limited or even blocked. So I would like to take you another moment and look very closely in silence. Were there situations in your life or in your working life where you were resisting foreignness? And how was it? How did it feel? Thank you for taking this moment. Now I think we all realized how ideally it should not be. And let's focus on what should be, what can be, if we take the gift of foreignness. So actually, if we take the gift of foreignness, Magic can be happening, because suddenly a whole new world opens up and we can see the other person as the person he or she is, namely a person who is culturally unique, just as all of you, Giorgio and me too. 
This opens opportunity to collaborate and co-create. And, and new solutions and results are possible. Actually, very innovative solutions. We, we never think of it before, but if we're in it, suddenly it flows and we truly co-create and collaborate. So, Giorgio, I think now the moment is come to unravel the mystery of the gift of foreign nets. Are you in? Okay. We are going to address four aspects. Number one is it needs a people-to-people -people interaction, heart-to-heart. -heart. So not a tick-the-box activity or, hey, give me a recipe, I need to deal with Italians. Doesn't work. Second, deepened cultural understanding is necessary. My studies in intercultural communication provided me with tools to recognize cultural patterns and their influence on a person's behavior. So now I know that you, Giorgio, are coming from a much more relationship-oriented culture. That means the personal level, personal relationship is very important too, and it's part of doing business. And that's why we went to the espresso bar, right? I, for myself, and I'm sure you recognize yourself, as Swiss, we are much more task-oriented. I go to a meeting, I have a clear agenda, a specific time frame, and within this time frame, I work. And maybe afterwards I have an espresso, but I'm working in the meeting room and not in the espresso bar. Knowing these cultural differences and these cultural patterns makes life much more easy. Third, openness, curiosity, and respect helps us to see the other person in the full cultural context and helps us to discover opportunities together. And last but not least, self-awareness is crucial. I learned to observe and reflect on my own cultural identity and how it shows up in my daily interaction. I also pay attention to my emotional reactions and my body sensations. Emotion, by the way, gives us a lot of valuable insights. So in this situation with Giorgio, when I was in the espresso bar getting angry, my anger tells me, hello, you're out of the comfort zone. And what I can do is I can set it aside and open myself up to the possibilities of foreigners. So I hear you wondering now, would I act differently nowadays if I would have the same meeting with Giorgio in Milano again? What would you say, Giorgio? Yes, absolutely. I wouldn't be stressed at all because I know many ways lead to Rome or better to Milano. It would go like this. Volentieri. So, the gift of foreignness is very powerful. Unwrapping it means Unwrapping it <laughs> needs a combination of cultural understanding, of self-awareness, respect, curiosity, and open-mindedness. And especially what it needs, it needs to engage with the other person wholeheartedly. So I invite you, as of right now, Start to explore foreignness. Look closely. Discover the gift of foreignness. Unwrap it wholeheartedly. And become much more successful when collaborating with people who are culturally different. And culturally different people, we, we have them also within Switzerland. The, t the topic is everywhere. Because at the end, and I'm going to embrace him. The gift of foreignness 
lies in togetherness.